no, I never wanted to do my medical sciences. <laughs> I never wanted to do it as a graduate student. I just yeah. wanted to get straight into like my yeah. degree and do it. But lo and behold, I failed to get into medicine. So I ended up doing biomedical sciences. Hey everyone, so today I am doing an interview video with Eski, so you guys might recognise her already, she is known as the Junior Doctor here on YouTube. So I will insert a little banner so you can go check her out. And yes, hello, Hi. welcome! Hi. <laughs> so this is the first time we are meeting up and we decided to do a little bit of a collab video. And I think we're just keeping it kind of like a little chat, asking each other questions mm -hmm. about our journeys. Obviously, Esgi is now an FY2 yeah. in London, and she can tell you all about that. Yeah. And yeah, so I guess we can start, and I'll let you give a little bit of an introduction for any of you guys who don't already know who she is, and then I've got some questions, okay. and we can get into it. Okay. Take it away. <laughs> so yeah, um, so my name's Esgi, I'm a 28-year-old doctor, so I did graduate medicine um, at UCL, and I'm now working in North London. So we're on like different ends of our journey. So I think it'll be quite yeah. nice to merge our two stories and just have a chat about medicine. And where we're going, exactly. Yeah, so I'm literally at the beginning of mine now and you've been through like the long haul and everything. <laughs> so I will ask you a bit of, um, I guess, certain questions for anybody in my situation who's starting yeah. out, because I know a lot of you guys have already gotten your offers and you're probably wondering what happens next. Yeah. So actually, the thing I want to start off with um, kind of a merged question because you did biomedical sciences mm -hmm. before did you always want to do biomed I mean or did you always want to do medicine and how was your biomed experience so I always wanted to do medicine and when people ask me this question I never know really like how to answer because it was just yeah. one thing that I, when, if, when I was a child everyone would be like mm -hmm. what do you want to become and I was like I want to be a doctor and it's only like yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's only later that I realized it's because mm -hmm. Um, I had like a passion for science but then mm -hmm. also I cared about people and wanted yeah. to always interact with people so it was just like a good sort of merger of two things mm -hmm. and no I never wanted to do my medical sciences <laughs> I never wanted to do it as a graduate student I just yeah. wanted to get straight into like my yeah. degree and do it but lo and behold I failed to get into medicine so I ended up doing biomedical sciences mm -hmm. and and yeah, I did have a few jokes at the time, being like, biomed is for like medicine rejects. I had that stuff. all the way through <laughs> three years, and I actually wanted to be this. I was like, guys, come on, <laughs> it's not that bad. Because yeah, like people but, like yeah. you were quite weird, right? Yeah. As in, like, no, no, that's not, true. Not that many people wanted to do biomed mm -hmm. just for its actual degree, but at the, so when I first started it, I was um, really not interested. I was like, I still want to do medicine. Why am I doing this? And then mm -hmm. when I got into it. I really enjoyed it, um, mm -hmm. I made great friends, I really enjoyed the subject, so yeah, it ended up, it ended up quite well. Well, okay, so I guess in, if you're looking back in hindsight, um, being in your situation where you definitely did want to do medicine, do you think biomed is a good slash the only option to take if you aren't successful medicine first time round? No, because if I look back into medicine, um, I would say that biomedical sciences gave me good study skills and mm -hmm. it prepared me for university. Yeah. It gave me a good foundation for the types of topics we were going to cover, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really like, oh, because I've done this, I'm going to be amazing now. Yeah. And as a doctor now, I work with other graduate students who have done like um, history and English and maths as their mm -hmm. first degrees. So, and they're equally as amazing and they do yeah. equally as a good job. So I don't think it makes a difference at all. But uh, in terms of like, I guess, would you, would like looking back, would you have decided to take a year out and go and do like a healthcare assistant or would you consider those things? Or would yeah. you definitely do a degree and then, like assuming you wouldn't get in the so, first time round? Yeah, so it's funny because I took two, so I took, so I applied at the end of my six form years and mm -hmm. I didn't get in and then I took a year out and I, and I worked in a pharmacy, ah, yeah. um, so that oh, yeah, was my course. kind of like healthcare thing. Yeah. Um, and then I did lots of volunteering work and work experience, but mm -hmm. I still didn't, didn't get in. Um, in hindsight, would I have done anything differently? No, because I feel like it's mm -hmm. the way you, um, the, the things that you learn from your experiences that really yeah. um, are important rather than what, you, what do. you do. So as long as you're passionate in something and you can talk about that in like medical school interviews and stuff, yeah, that's what's yeah. important. Okay, okay, well, fair enough. Um, so I guess the next thing is moving swiftly on from that. So you did your three years and then it came to the application process. Mm -hmm. um, how, just give a little bit of a, like how you found that. How was the application process for you as a graduate? So for me, I felt like I had more options because this time around mm -hmm. I was able to apply for the undergrad courses and the graduate courses. 
but I was really anxious because previously when I'd applied I got two rejections so that was like on my mind a lot yeah. and um, I did sort of question why I put myself through it again but I had mm -hmm. friends with me who were applying as well so we just did it together um, because I was preoccupied with university and just doing my final year um, it was kind of a better place for me because it was on the back of my mind when I when I was getting like my UCAS stuff coming through and that you know those yeah. emails it's oh, like there's yeah, no change yeah, on your yeah, UCAS yeah. and then you like rush to a computer. Like anxiety for months isn't it? Every time I got an email I'd be like, <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> like exactly. You're always like refreshing your email yeah, feeds. Yeah. For no reason. Okay. So yeah this, the, th the third time around I was less worried because at the end I would have had a degree and I had a plan B at that point yes. which I didn't have when I mm -hmm. when I applied first time round so yeah it's a bit easier a bit easier in that sense and so this is something we could probably like talk hours about but if you had to like summarize your medical school experience mm -hmm. um, especially as you were a grad on an undergrad course like generally how was it how did you find it what advice would you give to somebody who's about to go and <laughs> start the journey um so for me um everyone who knows me will know that I was like a little bit antisocial, I was a little bit of an introvert so I didn't really get involved in socialising mm -hmm. and society and that sort of stuff and um, medical school itself and just generally university life is mm -hmm. like such a diverse environment to get involved with loads of different things, things from like knitting to like football um, so as you do, <laughs> <laughs> knitting and football, why not? <laughs> so um, the one piece of advice I would say is actually just slow down and enjoy your time um, mm -hmm. sign up to some societies because the one thing I regret now when I look back is I focus mm -hmm. so much on studying and worrying about getting certain grades that I missed out on the whole university experience properly yeah. so if you're going through it even medicine or just something else completely mm -hmm. different just slow down enjoy your time make sure you work mm -hmm. hard but then also have fun as well and did you manage to come up with a solution of doing that because when I did my undergrad I was just inefficient so I would do a lot of work mm -hmm. and I wouldn't similar to you make like I wouldn't have enough time or energy at the end so have you found a way through your five years to get your work done efficient like efficiently so that obviously you can spend time with your partner you yeah. can see friends you can see family is this something um, or is yeah, it just no definitely no so I was so I think I'm a bit like you for me to get certain grades I need to study like really hard and I need to like yeah. pour hours and hours yeah. and like do repetition forever and mm -hmm. yeah. um, so the one thing I used to always do is once I used to have a lecture or like a module I used to go straight into it and just do it if I started early Get then I had time the exactly yeah. so I'd have time at the end and that was my little reward so I'd set it like that instead of just like postponing it and just going on and building on and up exactly oh yeah yeah I, I made that mistake and I've mentioned that before and it's a nightmare because you're like you can't listen in your lectures because you're thinking about another like 50 okay. things okay so Medical school was finished. Guys, we're having like a brief history yeah. of the junior doctor, <laughs> yeah, like, like from, life from start to finish, you're going through. So you finished that. Um, I'm not going to ask you too much about like, the technicalities yeah. of like applying for other places because, guys, she's got plenty of videos. <laughs> Go watch them, they're very helpful. Um, but in a, on a personal level, was it quite difficult for you to shift from medical school to your doing your foundation? Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like... I mean you're never going to be fully prepared and you just have to accept that because all of the exams that you have and all of the situations that you're in are all simulated yeah. and even when you're shadowing doctors and like you're in your final year and it's sort of like an internship year you're never fully part of the team you can never fully get involved as much as you try yeah. so I think you're just aware that it's it's going to be different and just accepting that you're going to struggle a little bit and it's just a nice sort of adaptation instead of seeing it as like a horrible thing that's going to happen and you're going to cry for weeks and weeks I think yeah. it's just a way of just like seeing it's like a nice transition mm -hmm. so yeah there was like I was it, I did find it a bit difficult um, mm -hmm. at first um, I was just doubting myself because I was like okay I've learned this in medical school but yeah. these are real patients now and like it nurses really are asking me questions and I was yeah. like I was a medical school student like two weeks ago and now mm -hmm. I'm like giving people orders so yeah it was difficult but I think it's the approach that you should have so just yeah. embrace it and just get into it and if you want just ask for advice because mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing you worry that people are going to judge you for not knowing mm -hmm. things but actually they'd rather you approach them and ask them and they're really happy rather than looking like you're doing your own business but actually being quite yeah. dangerous no that's true and do you do you feel like there's enough support around you um either as a medical student or um as like an fy1 mm. like in terms of do the nurses and stuff do they do they are they kind of like appreciative of the fact that you're new and you're a bit like nervous and bound to be on ice because 
I think people have mixed experiences. Some mm -hmm. people do feel alone, but other people feel like they're completely immersed in part of a team. So yeah. what, how did you find it? So my experiences, so when my first job as a doctor was within the surgical firm and there was nine of us together. So we had a big group. And um, so I think that made a big difference with how I adapted to like my doctoring career. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the, the nurses were well aware that it was like our first rotation. And so they took it easy on us. I do know some people have like different experiences, but I think generally from mm -hmm. what I've heard from my other friends, it's yeah. usually quite, quite good. Quite good, so you're part of the team. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I think that was like a few things I wanted to finish off on. Um, yeah, so this is, this is the good part. Talk a little bit about your YouTube channel okay. and about mm -hmm. that and the content you make, because I know obviously I'm a few years back, yeah. um, but if any of, any of my audience are watching and they're either in medical school or they're finishing up and they kind of want to know what's next that is yeah. like, talk about some of your content and um, where everybody can find you <laughs> yeah so um my channel is called the junior doctor so the story behind it was i'd finished my final year i'd come back from my electives and um, so i did six weeks in turkey and i was at the airport and i was having a chat with my now husband and i was just saying that how i wanted to document my journey and we had this idea of doing it on youtube so i've got videos of like my first day at work and like all the difficulties i've had things i do on my days off mm -hmm. um and like day in the life video so i talk about medicine and being a doctor but then also just general life yeah um so yeah come yeah. along and come i'd love to see you there exactly okay and finally to finish <laughs> off the question if you had to give one piece of advice to any prospective medical students be it like somebody like myself who's just about to begin or somebody who's about to start on the journey of applying mm -hmm. what would you give um because so because of my personal experiences just be <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry <laughs> um, just be prepared mm -hmm. um, be prepared for rejection always have a plan b mm -hmm. but try i mean if you are a well-rounded person so academically and also extracurricular stuff mm -hmm. like sports and other societies and that sort of stuff there's mm -hmm. no reason why you won't be successful mm -hmm. but just have in the back of your mind that expectation that you could all just go wrong mm -hmm. and if you have that there then it just makes the whole process so much easier and stress-free yeah. I know it's like it sounds negative but actually it's a good thing because if you prepare for the worst then when good things happen it's really nice yes exactly okay well thank you so much for being on my channel um, guys I will put all of the links below go and check Eski out she makes amazing content and we will also make a video on Eski's channel and what are we going to talk about? So we're going to talk about your journey and things that have happened to you, <laughs> why you want to do medicine. So I'm going to grow you a little bit. Oh yeah, I'm going to get grilled in the next video. <laughs> okay, so we'll link all of that below and thank you so much for watching. And I guess if you have any questions or anything for us, then we'll have a chat with you downstairs. Alright, see you later. Bye. Bye.